God has his mouth on me, and he has set me free. Oh, oh my God has his mouth on me, yes, he's been good to me. Wonderful Wednesday in the Word. I'm Wesley T. Leonard, minister of the Southside Church. And on our wonderful Wednesday in the Word tonight, we invite you, solicit you to always invite a family member, a co-worker, a friend, a neighbor. Uh, uh, let them know that we're walking through the Word on Wednesday nights and all that everyone is invited. Now we're coming off of a great successful uh, fall festival, what a time, what a time, what a time. I'm sure you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, just nothing like young people uh, exhibiting their faith and confidence in God. We're preaching it to all you parents and guardians who made sure you young people were there. We're looking forward to an exciting future at the Southside Church of Christ. The sky is the limit of what God can do with our youth and even with our adults as we all seek to become more pleasing in God's holy and divine sight. Let's continue to walk through the word on Wednesdays tonight. Let us continue to study and show ourselves approved unto God, a workman who needeth not be ashamed, but rightly divide the word of truth. Tonight, let's look at a discipline uh, that I think will be helpful. And I talk to a plethora of people, as you know, as a minister, uh, as a counselor, as an evangelist, a pastor. You, you end up talking to a plurality of people. One, one of the things is a common thread I see amongst the inhabitants of the kingdom of God is uh, disappointment. How do you deal with disappointing things in life or disappointing people? So tonight, let's talk about disappointments that Christians face. Uh, disappointments that Christians face. 
I think you concur with me tonight. I think I can say without uh, successful contradiction. I think I can state emphatically it's a great joy being a Christian. Great things happen at the Lord's church. There are benefits to being in the church and being a child of God. Unfortunately, problems and disappointments sometimes overwhelm us and cause some to fall away from the faith. Tonight, um, hopefully, my prayer is we can deal with a subject matter to help people deal with their disappointments even as Christians. The devil's modus operandi, the devil's purpose and goal is to present you with things and people that will disappoint you and turn you away from God. And he, one of his descriptive names is he's the accuser. You remember how he accused Job before God and accused God before the devil. He pits both sides against the middle. One of the tools in the devil's arsenal to get you, you, especially you and I, one of the tools he uses to separate us from God is disappointment. Yes, because life comes with such a joyful anticipation. We come to the church, we come to Christ, we're excited about our forgiveness of sin, we're excited uh, the chance to start over with a clean slate in Christ. Uh, you're taught and you learn the benefits of the Holy Spirit and being in the cornea, the uh, fellowship of the saints. Uh, it, it can be a socially enriching atmosphere. The church is a place where your youth and young people and children and grandchildren can flourish and grow. A uh, lot, lot of great things go on in the kingdom and in the church. Sad to say, though, we soon discover that no matter how well you live and no matter how great the congregation of the Lord's people you attend, soon you discover disappointment will knock at your door. You discover things after you've been in the church a while, like uh, temptations still come and sometimes they're just as strong as they were before you were in the Lord. You learn stuff like it's easy to be discouraged, overcome uh, with things and people. You learn it's an ongoing process for your transformation from the world to the church. You learn that, that one of the stumbling blocks though that's placed in our path is disappointment. Let's look at three different umbrellas tonight under the uh, subject matter of disappointments that Christians face. One of the things, the first one we'll deal with, the first umbrella tonight is dealing with imperfect Christians. That's when we are disappointed by the brethren. You see, here's how life works if you read your scriptures adequately. When you're disappointed with life, and the psalmist did a very adequate job of explaining this. He's talking about the persecution of life. Persecution comes from people, but affliction comes from life. People will persecute you, but life will afflict you. Either one of them can disappoint you. So let's deal first with dealing with imperfect Christians when you're disappointed by the brethren people have disappointed you when you witness some level of inconsistency in the lives of other Christians it can disappoint you when people are not all they cranked up to be not all they present themselves to be they're not all that they purport themselves to be they uh, who was it that say I'd rather see a sermon than hear a sermon? Uh, I can't s uh, listen to what you say because I'm too busy watching what you do. 
Yeah, people can disappoint you. That's why you never put your confidence in man. The psalmist declared in Psalms 118 and 8, it is better to trust in God than to put confidence in man. I always say, I love it, one of my wife's saying is, you cannot let me down if you're not the one holding me up. And so you got to learn, I got to learn, you got to practice, I got to practice. You got to know, and I got to know, that dealing with people will make you vulnerable for disappointment. Yes, you see those who don't practice what they preach. It, it turns some people off in the church. It causes them to be disappointed with God and Christ. Don't hold God and Christ accountable for what other people do. No more than you would want me to hold you accountable for what other people do. Yes, folk who you looked up to and then they let you down. You put them on a pedestal. You look up to them. Well, who in the, where in the Bible did it ever say that? The Bible says in Psalms 121, I will look to the hill from whence cometh my help. All my help comes from the Lord. Never tell you look up to a man. This is not a new phenomenon, a challenge. In Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 through 14, uh, Paul confronted Peter and James. And he, he was very um, pointed at. He said, uh, you live, you're a Jew, but you live like a Gentile. Yet you ask Gentiles to live like they Jews, and yet you're a Jew and live like you're a Gentile. In other words, practice what you preach. Now, my problem with some people is they demand other people be pure and pristine and perfection in their living. But they don't do that themselves. Well, if you're disappointed in other people, just know somebody's probably disappointed in you. And another caveat while I'm flying over this territory, don't judge people when you don't know all the facts about a person. See, you judge on a marriage and you ain't never been to their house. You, you judge on a man as a husband, you're not married to her. You judge on a husband as a wife and you're not married to him. You know, you, you have to be very careful. I tell you something else can disappoint you is harshness of words. Sometimes you said it alone in Christianity and somebody just blow you up, just get into an argument or have demonstrative, volatile and, uh, words and uh, dramatic experience with folk. You can be hurt and injured by what people say to you. You can be disappointed at the speech pattern. Again, let me caveat now, if you can dish it out, you ought to be able to take it. Some, some people, you can't say nothing to them. I mean, you got to treat them with kid gloves, walk around with eggshells, and yet they can escalate you from here to Jacksonville and back. No, if you're hurt by words, harsh words, well, don't give any harsh words. I, I think there's some Bible for that. Yeah, do unto others, Jesus said, as you would have them. To unto you. We, we strive as Christians to be better examples so we don't disappoint one another. We don't want to have to go to judgment and give an account that we turn somebody away from God because of our walk was not up to par. First Peter, First Timothy, rather, chapter 4, verse 12. Paul reminds his young protege, his Padawan, uh, one of his followers and pupils and learners, the young Timotheus, a.k.a. Timothy. Paul said in 1 Timothy 4 and 12, let no man despise your youth. He says to this young man, be thou an example to the believers. All of us ought to be examples to other fellow believers. Uh, that we don't disappoint or turn people away from the most holy faith. Paul said, be thou an example to the believers in word, be an example in conversation. Paul said, be an example in love, spirit, in faith, and in purity. 
Yes, one of the things that are disappoint us is when we're dealing with imperfect Christians, dealing with people, dealing with the brethren. Uh, what a help all of us, and I'm learning and still growing and looking for spiritual maturity and modernity to set in. Confess when you're wrong. If you've done something wrong, you embarrass God, embarrass your family, embarrass yourself, you sin. Confess your fault. Confess your wrong. Uh, some people always blame somebody else for every problem in their life. Sometimes it's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. When you're wrong, it, you'll be surprised. It goes a long ways with people. If you're man enough, a woman enough, to say, I'm wrong, I was wrong, and I'm sorry. I, I'm always amazed at the pride and arrogance of some people. They're never wrong. They can't say they're sorry. They find a way to blame somebody. and so it, it can't always be somebody else. I've learned. Sometimes I'm wrong, and I'm trying my best. And I've gained a lot of ground to be humble enough to say, I'm wrong, I'm sorry, please forgive me. God is not finished with me yet. It will show people and the church that all of us are still under construction. We're still in this spiritual transformation. Our journey is not complete. We're still uh, climbing Jacob's ladder to glory. We're still in this walk with God that Enoch started in the Old Testament. Yes, dealing with imperfect Christians can disappoint you. And those of us who are Christians, we have a responsibility, a spiritual, judicial responsibility. We have a responsibility to live up to the vocation by which we've been called. The second thing tonight, not only we get disappointed by people, remember now, persecution comes from people. Affliction comes from life. People persecute you, but life will afflict you. You don't have to sign up for it. You ain't got to beg for it. You ain't got to look for it. You can't hide from it. Life will afflict you sooner or later. Second thing we did tonight is when you're disappointed by the world. Trials and tribulations in life can come from your job, come from your family, sometimes from your friends, sometimes from your concentric circle of people you know, trust, and depend on. Discouragement and disappointment can come by worldly things, by people, by situations, by circumstances, your supervisor, your boss, your neighbor, just life, disappointed by the world. Uh, that's why you have to be very careful, and I talked last week to the young people about who you surround yourself with. You want to be careful not to surround yourself with too many worldly people, lest you end up disappointed. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. If you are trying to do right and you're hanging around wrong people, you're going to end up disappointed. You're going to end up hurt. You're going to end up discouraged. Yeah, life, the world, living, working, occupation, career, job, all of that can disappoint you. Lastly tonight, lest I be too indelibly long, uh, we already talked about what things that disappointment Christians can face. And it starts with dealing with imperfect Christians or people, uh, those who uh, talk the talk but don't walk the walk. That, that can disappoint you. Turn you away. Secondly, we talked about being disappointed by the world, the visitudes of life, affliction by life circumstances, 
trials and tribulations, situations, scenarios, discouragement, disappointment. And we then talked about the importance of surrounding yourself. As the Bible says, you're in the world, but you're not of the world. And if you're not careful, you end up disappointed because you're in the world and you end up being of the world. And then ultimately, since you want to live for Christ, the world disappoints you. I say again, if you ain't the one holding me up, it's impossible for you to be the one to let me down. Lastly tonight, life can offer us disappointed when we're disappointed by lack of success, spiritual success, uh, physical success, financial success, educational success. Life uh, can disappoint you. You feel like, many people feel like, I ought to be farther along in life than I am right now. I ought to have more money than I have right now. I feel like I ought to be married by now. I ought to have a boo to go home to by now. I'm disappointed in my health because I don't have success. I weigh too much. I eat too much. I exercise too little. My blood pressure is up. My bank account's down. Life can disappoint you by lack of success in vital areas of importance to you. Uh, your career can be disappointed. I should be, excuse me, farther advanced in my career. I ought to be the supervisor. I ought to be a regional manager. I ought to be a manager. I ought to be on the board by now. I ought, I, I, I ought to be a CEO by now. Life can disappoint you by your lack of success. You look and feel like you're not as far along as you should be. Like, even in church, I should be a deacon by now. I should be an elder by now. Uh, I, I should be preaching by now. I, I, I should have been a Sunday school teacher by now. I should be at least working with the youth program. I, I should be involved with ministries and programs at the local church, a local congregation. You can be disappointed by lack of success and lack of advancement. Peter talked about that in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 to 9, the disappointment of his ministry, his apostleship, and how that can infiltrate you. Yes, we watch and observe so many things on television and the internet to make us hunger and thirst for success in areas. Sometimes that ought not be a uh, a measuring stick on our success, but society judges us by what we drive and what we wear and where we live and how much education we have. And when we don't have those things, society will look down on you and cast down on you with a disparaging eye. So life, the lack of success. What is it John said in First uh, John? There's three things in life the devil uses, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Yes, beloved, there's three stages that we most dominantly live in in church. The first stage is when we come in, we, we on fire. We're on that on fire stage. Just got baptized, excited, exuberant, uh, telling everybody about this new walk with God, everything is a honeymoon stage in Christianity. And then the reality stage sets in. That, that, that means you start seeing things for what they really are and people for what they really are. God don't change. The Hebrew writer says in Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus said, I'm the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. God not going to change. Malachi 3 and 8, I am the Lord God and I change not. God not going to change. But the third stage, not only we learned the on fire stage, that's not going to last. The reality stage set in and you learn people and you learn life. But then there's the up and down stage, the vacillation stage. You learn. Sometime I'm up, sometime I'm down, sometime I'm almost level to the ground. And so you learn that life is full of disappointments, even for a child of God. 
Sometimes you're disappointed with people. Sometimes you're disappointed with the world you live. And sometimes you're just disappointed with your own lack of success. And you'd be surprised, unless you minimize it tonight, that disappointment is a tool that the devil uses in his arsenal to get you and I off of our game. If you do fall, even if you're disappointed with yourself, and I've been there, done that, got a t-shirt. I, I, I disappointed myself. By the way, I've disappointed God and other people that I love. You gotta learn how to get up, knock the dirt off of your shoulders, repent and move on and live life on a higher plane. Don't allow disappointment to be used against you in your walk with God. Whether you are disappointed by yourself, your lack of success, whether you're disappointed by this world, this sophomore satanic society, or whether you're disappointed by people, Christians who ought to know better and do better. Whatever you do, make sure you stay with God no matter what. And don't allow things and people, life and people, to affect your walk with this high and holy God. What a joy, what an ecstasy, what a privilege and a pleasure tonight to talk to you about the disappointments that Christians face. Let's be on guard, let's be ready to face them, conquer them, and go on in spite of, not because of. God bless you tonight. We look forward to seeing you this Sunday, the fifth Sunday, the last Sunday in the month of October. We encourage all of our members, come back to the building. COVID is diminished. We have vaccinations everywhere. It's time to come back. Enjoy our educational program, 10 a.m. And uh, classes for all ages, and particularly for our youth, including new converts class this Sunday in the vision classroom. All of you who've been baptized in the last three years are just new members and need to be grounded and rooted again and the rudimentary facts of the faith. Come. And then 11 a.m., morning worship, uh, 4701 Raleigh Street. If you can't make it, please live stream on all of our social medias. Be a part of the good things happening at the Southside Church of Christ. God bless you. God keep you. That is our prayer. Be blessed tonight. Learn to conquer the dis disappointments that Christians face. Good night.